you say, I'm sorry. We are beginning by asking Allah to protect us against shaitan. We are saying, We are running to the safety of Allah from shaitan, the cursed one. Now, if we begin like that, those ones who accuse us of having a circle 
being an association of shaitan, there must be something wrong with their heads. Huh? Or the very jealous kind. Or the very arrogant kind. Whatever kind. So we say, Uzbillah ibn Shaitan al Rajim. Then we say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The beginning of the name of Allah. And we're asking Allah to bless the Holy Prophet, والسلام, asking for his blessings. All the Anbiya, all the Awliya, especially from our Sultan al Awliya. And especially, especially from the Wasila to bring us to Sultan al Awliya. Our Sahib, Sahib al Saif, Shaykh Abdul Kan Kabrisiya Rabbani. Allah Sir, may Allah preserve his secret. May Allah raise his station higher and higher. Now, we begin like that. We will be in safety, inshallah, Rahman. We're here sitting and asking Allah to send us something through the hands of our Shaykh. Wahhabis, they say that it's shirk, right? Say so you cannot. It's very disturbing, they say. But we say your Shaykh is looking at you, watching you, meaning the spiritual power of your Shaykh. The same way, spiritual power of the Prophet is watching us at every time, isn't it? Prophet is saying. So many hadiths, we're not going to go into that. If you don't know those hadiths, find out. We're not here to have hadith class. We're here to know ourselves and to know our ego. That's another thing about tariqat. Tariqat is not about hadith class or fiqh class or this class or that class. It's for us to know our ego, for us to know ourselves. The knowledge of the self that is the highest knowledge because that will lead you to the knowledge that is higher than that, which is the knowledge of Allah. So, we are sitting here and we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send us something through the hands of our shaykh. Because Allah will always cause something. This is the divine protocol. If he wants to send something, he doesn't send directly. He sends through the hands of someone. Wahhabis, they say, it is uh, shirk. It's okay, we leave that too. Tariqat is also not about fighting Wahhabism. That is not what Tariqat is. <laughs> tariqat is about fighting our ego. Then we must check those ones who are fighting Wahhabism day and night. Then we see, Allah, Allah, you have Wahhabism inside of you. Day and night, you're saying, oh, we are for sheikhs, we are for tariqat, we are for Sufism, we are hate the Wahhabi so much. I say, why you hate them so much? Yeah, of course, we hate what Allah hates, but that is the reason of your creation. That is the reason why you are in tariqat. To hate them like that. And what are you doing? Nothing. You're just talking too much. But we see those ones who hate Wahhabism, saying they love Prophet wasalam, so much. Which, if you love Prophet wasalam, so much, you're not going to spend too much time dealing with the Wahhabis also. Not too much time. Majority of your time, you're going to concentrate on love of Prophet and the mercy of the Prophet. Then that time you'll find other ways to reach to people too. It's, but we see now new style, those ones who are saying, we are against the Wahhabism, but we say, we're thinking and we're looking. These ones, they have Wahhabi characteristics inside of them. They are following Tariqat, they are following Shaykhs, we say you have Wahhabi. Because Wahhabi says, no, no, no. No wasila. Isn't it? Direct Allah. Like shaitan. Direct, I worship you. I don't make prostration to Adam. Salam. Like those who say, la mazhab. No. Mazhab. Why we have to follow imam? Directly Quran and Sunnah. These mazhabs, imams, they are following what? <laughs> they are following Quran and Sunnah. They say, no, don't follow, follow directly, Prophet. Now, new style, we're saying, not new style anyway, it's been going on for years uh, since our Shaykh 
has been veiled, it's been happening to us too, alhamdulillah. Because it's been happening to our Shaykh all his life, it must happen to us. If it doesn't happen to us, we think there is something wrong with us too. We're not walking in their footsteps. Now they're saying, no, follow directly now the Sultan. Don't follow your Shaykh. What is this? Bayat is only to Sultan, not to the Shah. I say, you squarehead. Now you're behaving like a Wahhabi. Wahhabi says directly to Allah. No intermediary. No wasilat. No shafaat. Nothing in between. No, you cannot. Everyone must follow only Sultan. So those ones, although it doesn't matter now, even if we do so much work, we do so much zikr, we do, we're not doing anything. Shaykh Fendi is giving us the blessings to do it, alhamdulillah. They're not going to look at the work that you're doing because they are deaf, dumb and blind. They have become they're so certain. These are shaitans because they're not following directly sultan. Eh, squarehead, why are you behaving like Wahhabi? Why are you behaving like Wahhabi? Of course all of us, we are following Allah. Of course all of us, we are following Prophet. Of course all of us, we are following Sultan. Of course we are. But Allah always sends means to us. And Allah is saying in the Holy Quran, seek means to come close to me. Since when you become Wahhabi, in the name of Tariqat you become Wahhabi. No, no bayat to anyone else except for Sultan. We all give our bayat, isn't it? Those ones that are Close to Sultan, those ones who are representing him, we give our bayat to him. What's your problem now? So, but the jealousy, the jealousy is a shaitanic characteristic. They cannot say nothing, then they're going to start criticizing about uh, the kind of turban we wear, or the kind of clothes we wear, or the kind of chair we sit on. Later, they're going to say the kind of food we eat. Uh, what else are they going to say? Uh, the kind of uh, surma we use, the kind of miswak we use, the kind of shoes. We, you're not looking. Is that, don't be busy with that. Okay. You want to say something? Talk about the work that we are doing. But you cannot talk about the work that we're doing. Because Alhamdulillah, with our Sheikh Sahib al Sahib, yes, that's our Sheikh. Sultan al Awliya is our Sultan. We have manners. We're not saying Sultan al Awliya is our Sheikh. Can you say you're following Prophet directly? The same one who's saying you must follow Sultan directly. Can you say you're following Prophet directly? Then you're becoming complete Wahhabi at that time. Wahhabi is saying, don't follow Mazhab. Follow Prophet directly. Follow Quran and Hadith. No need to follow any Mazhab Imam. It's open, it's there for you. Why you have to follow? See, well, these ones they're saying, follow Sultan directly, don't follow. So he's saying, it's okay, you're still, uh, I don't know what it is. But be busy <laughs> with your own thing. You're too free, maybe. Be busy with your own thing. If you're busy with the love of the Prophet, if you say you're Ahli Tariqat and you're busy with the love of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, and you're busy with the love of your Sheikh, that one that brought you to Sultan al Awliya. My question is will your Sheikh say that to you? Has your Sheikh ever said that? Impossible, he did not, because we know him too. He did not. So, before you get into more trouble, uh, pull yourself away. The more you're busy with things that don't concern you, more burden and heaviness is going to fall on you. The more you're going to make fitna more burden and heaviness is going to fall on you. So be busy. And if people are running in the way of Islam, be happy for them. Pray for them. Even if they are, we're looking, even as some people, they are making some mistakes here and there. They see, we're saying, Ya Rabbi, you are the turner of hearts. Turn them, Ya Rabbi. Make it to become good, Ya Rabbi. Don't interfere. You are given that authority to interfere? No, don't interfere. But you're saying, there is truth and there is falsehood. We must interfere. Then why you enter into tariqat? Tariqat, you enter to know. Uh, you enter into tariqat for the awliya Allah to give you authority to behave as you like. Or you come into tariqat and the shah says, Now, 
We are going to take away your freedom because you are not understanding the authority that is given to you if it is coming from your ego, coming from the nafs or coming from Allah, from Rahman. So before you know that, we are going to take everything away from you. We are going to let you know what is haq and batil. Later we may give you. And according to what your area of responsibility is. Maybe your area of responsibility is just to take care of your family. You have no right to interfere into no one else. Maybe your area of responsibility is two or three people around you. That's it. Maybe your area of responsibility is to the whole village, to the whole town. Some people, they're giving area of responsibility. They can go and speak to the whole world. That one who has authority only to speak to his family cannot judge now according to that one who has authority to speak to the whole world. You don't have authority to speak to the whole world. Then don't. Our authority is given by those ones who have authority. By who? By the Sultan. He is giving us authority. We never ask for it. And we have our Shaykh, Alhamdulillah, that is always there. Yes, from beyond the mountain of Kaf, may Allah raise his station higher and higher. And he is holding us, holding our leash to make us to run to the proper way, to run to the right direction. And inshallah, Rahman, to become better servants of Allah. May Allah forgive us. We are his weak is dirty servants but we're asking Allah to forgive us and to cover our mistakes make that dua to each other don't make other kinds of duas to each other don't hate each other don't fight with each other you see something not so good in your brothers <coughs> find excuse first it's sunnah. You're saying find 70 excuses. Now, Ahli Tariqat first want to jump. To start blaming and to start cursing and to start branding and to start um, pulling that one down. Instead of thinking, investigating, asking, just jumping in. Then you've fallen into the characteristics of those ones that you don't like. That's exactly what the Wahhabis do. Wahhabis are very quick to pronounce takfir, isn't it? This is kufr, this is haram, this is bid'ah, this is shirk, very quickly. Now we see Ahli Tariqat doing it. They see something and they don't quite understand. They say, this is haram. This is forbidden. This is wrong. Wrong is wrong. You have permission to speak? Or do you really know what you say? Are you really trying to find out? No. Now you're s filled with this, what they call... Righteous, self-righteous anger that is also coming from the ego. May Allah forgive us, inshallah, Rahman. Yes, so our brother here asking a question. Eh? Question he is asking, how do we what? How do we not talk too much? This is exactly what we've been talking about. People talking too much. Now they're talking on the internet too much. Everywhere, before at least they speak over the phone, there is no record. Now they're doing something, there is a record there. Don't you know? If we don't have a record, if you don't uh, keep it, the NSA is going to keep it. <laughs> yeah? But Allah and His Prophet, with the uh, malaikat, with the angels, they are keeping it too. Make sure our record is always good. You don't have two good things, keep it. Don't open it. Don't speak. Don't make other people to be witnesses because Islam is very heavy on that. You're doing something, don't make other people to witness over you. If it is something that is wrong, don't do that. So, how are you going to stop yourself from talking too much? Look at what you're doing. Don't look at what you're saying. If the man is wise... He's going to look at what he's doing and he's going to look at what he's saying. Do these things match? They don't. Then don't talk too much. Do more. But you have to sit down now and you have to think. You have to say to yourself, 
You cannot sit down and say to yourself, I'm a great one, I'm a good one, I'm an earlier, I'm a this. No, you sit down and you start questioning your motives. You start questioning your intention. You start questioning your actions. You put doubt, you put suspicion to your faith, yes, to your actions, to your intentions. Then that time, because you're trying to be sincere, you're trying to clean it up, Allah will send you ways to make it easy for you to see what is right and what is wrong. Then that time you're going to say, I talk so much about this, I'm not doing anything. Those who say something and they do something else, what are they called? Say, Munafik. Then you're going to, which one of us can sincerely say, now according to our faith, this is the level of faith can sincerely say that I'm not a munafik. Wahhabis, they will say, no, I'm not a munafik. I'm a mu'min. But no, the mu'min will never say that. Because mu'min will always have suspicion over his faith. Huh? You're awliya, you're different. That time if you're an awliya, you're never going to pronounce takfir. <laughs> you're never going to say this is this. You're not going to attack people. You're only going to pray for them. Just as Holy Prophet, والسلام, he prayed for them. No. The uh, Wahhabis, they're saying, no, I am a mu'min. I'm never I'm going to be a munafik. But, which one of us can say that we are higher than Hazrat Umar? No one. If you say you're higher than Hazrat Umar, then I'm going to put a big question mark to your faith. Hazrat Umar was afraid that he is a hypocrite, right? Eh? He was afraid that he was a hypocrite. But so many Muslims, 21st century Muslims now, they have no doubt about their faith. They have no doubt about their own hypocrisy. Hazrat Umar, a list was given to one of the Sahabis, a list of hypocrites. Prophet says, keep this, don't reveal this. Ever to anyone. When it was known that this Sahabi has a list of the hypocrites, the first one to go to him to ask him if he was a hypocrite, if he was on the list or not, was Hazrat Umar. Now, say to yourself now, this doesn't apply to you. So, the believer must look and must see if his actions are not in line with his speech, then he should not be talking too much should be doing more. Hmm? should be doing more. The once he starts doing more, that time his faith will go higher and higher. Yes. Three things in tariqat. Hmm? What is that? Don't speak so much. Don't eat too much. Don't sleep too much. But some, they give him permission to do that. Don't. None of us are. We should not be. Inshallah, Rahman, maybe this is enough for you. To not talk too much. Hmm? And you're going to sit down and say the words that I speak today, how much of it is really in remembrance of Allah? It's really useful words. How much is it is just blah, 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 blah. I'm talking. Yes, that's why it needs tariqah training. Tariqah is not just to see lights, to see miracles going up to higher stations. Tariqah is to teach you to know yourself. You're holding up a mirror and you're really looking at yourself because this is important because in the grave, that's exactly what's going to happen to you. They're going to look at you very, very carefully. They're going to look at the words, your actions, your deeds. Your in they're going to look at everything. If you look at yourself now, if you take that mirror and you really look and you understand now and you try to fix I'm not saying that we are going to get better overnight. Maybe it's going to take a whole life. We are weak ones. That's why we need the help and the support of our shaykhs, of the Prophet, of those ones that Allah loves. With that support now, when we take one step, Allah take ten steps now. That will count for something. Don't wait until we're in the grave. It's too late that time to fix. This is what tariqat is. You look at your actions, you become very hyper aware of yourself then of your surroundings, then that time you will look 
with the nur of Allah. You will not cheat and you will not be cheated. No matter what other people they're going to say. They're going to attack, they're going to call you names, they're going to say this, they're going to say that. They will continue to bark. And they're going to choke on their barking too. And maybe until they pass, they're going to continue to bark. They're barking for us to turn to look at them. That's all they're looking for, for us just to turn. We're not even going to turn. We're saying to you, don't bark. Because we're not going to turn. <laughs> Better for you to stop. You want to continue barking, you'll die barking too. And you just want us to turn, we're not going to turn. Then it's not going to be too intelligent for you. Those who are trying to be so macho, trying to be so uh, self-righteous, whoever it is, talking about me. May Allah forgive us, inshallah. So, not everything is for everyone. You must know this is a very big topic here. Okay, You must know where your place is. But that is why we entered the tariqat, so that we know where our stations are. We know where we can talk, where we cannot talk. Where we can interfere, where we must not interfere. This takes a lot of training. This takes a lot of intelligence. This takes a lot of stepping on the ego. Because they are teaching us, talk. Talk. Anytime you want to talk, anything you want to say, say. You have a right to do it. You have the freedom to do it. Aren't you a free man? You have to do that. You cannot even, but the reality is, you cannot even do that when you're working in your job. You cannot do that definitely when you enter into the military. Talk anytime you want to talk. Say whatever you want to say. You cannot do that in the hospital. You cannot do that in the court. You cannot do that in dunya. What about in spiritual training? In tariqat, you think you can do that? You cannot. But people are blind. They take one thing and they say it applies to everything else. It's not. May Allah grant us more uh, strength and power to guard our tongue, inshallah. Because those ones who are not guarding the tongue from Malayani, Prophet is saying, it will lead them to hellfire. ومن الله توفيق الفاتحة. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. Any questions? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. How does one connect their heart to their shaykh if they live far away? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. First, you have to understand that your shaykh is not an imam. He is not a scholar. He is your sheikh. Meaning he is your guide. He is the one who guides your spirit. And the one who guides your spirit, is there a beginning or an end to your spirit? You think your spirit only needs guidance here in this world? It means that our guide, our spiritual guide, has been there too. Since a spirit was given to us. This question and this answer is going to definitely anger so many Wahhabi kind people. They say, Shaykh is just like an Imam. You don't like this one, you jump to this one. You don't like this one, you jump to this one. Of course, there are so many different kinds of Shaykhs. But once you reach to the Shaykh that is supposed to be for you, that is the highest, that one, 
you will find that that one has been there with you from the beginning and will be with you till the end and beyond. How is that possible? Prophet والسلام, was he not always a prophet? Wasn't he? He, was, he said, والسلام, I was a prophet when Adam والسلام, was between water and clay. He was Habib, he was a prophet, he was representing Allah before everything else was created. You think after everything else was created, he stopped representing Allah? You think after he was removed from this physical world, he stopped representing Allah? You think in the day of judgment, he's not going to be a prophet? You think beyond that, he's not going to be? He's continuously going to become a prophet. So our Shaykh is the same, continually guiding us. Wahhabis, they're saying, no, on some, I'm hearing Sufi kind of people, they are so big, their egos, they say, no, 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 Shaykh's just there to show you the direction, after that they're going to disappear. They're just there to give you a message, then after that they're going to disappear. They're there to, some are saying, uh, that Prophet is there just to give us a message, it's like a, a mailman, it's like a postman, then after that it's about you. No, it's not about you. It is not about you. So, once we understand that our Sheikh has always been there, from the day of promises, to our lives, to our graves, to the Barzakh, to Judgment Day, to beyond, then that time we slowly start to understand the station of our Sheikh we can start making a connection. Okay? I know there's so many different kinds. People are saying, make rabita like this, make rabita like that. You're supposed to pray, you're supposed to do this, you sit and you imagine your sheikh is in front of you, you become one. <sighs> That's not our way. Because the sheikh, now if you understand his spirit, now you're going to slowly start to understand that he is surrounding you. Wahhabi is not going to like this, I already told you. Your Sheikh is surrounding you from beginning to the end. And as long as you are holding on tightly to your Sheikh and not to anyone else, as long as you are having no doubt about him, that time, his support, his connection will be with you. His support and his connection will be with you. <coughs> say, how can the Sheikh be everywhere? Same way that they say, how can Prophet be everywhere? But if we say, Shaitan, isn't he everywhere? They say, of course, Shaitan is everywhere. Hmm? They say, no, no, only Allah is everywhere. But we say, but isn't Shaitan also everywhere? They say, yes. Now, you see how weird things are. But, Prophet والسلام, is Hazir and Nazir. And he is present and he is always warning, guiding. Warning means to guide. And those ones who are his inheritors, they have that spiritual power as well. When they are alive, they do that. When they pass, they have even more power to do that. So if you understand, if you believe in the power of your Sheikh that time, you are making connection to him. That time you are making Rabita to him. Yes. This is beyond listening to his sohbets. Okay? This is beyond putting his sohbet into your life. We're talking from a completely different level now. So, now you're putting your Sheikh at a station where he deserves to be. But his station is always rising, of course. Then, from that understanding, you'll say, if this is my Sheikh, what about my Prophet? If this is my Prophet, what about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allahu Akbar. That time we say Allahu Akbar, you really mean it. So, we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep our connection to our Sheikh strong. Now, you're talking about spiritual connection because you say if you live far away, how you make that connection? This is how you make the spiritual connection first. And have no doubt about it. 
take away the doubt. Then, that time, read the Sohbet, yes, understand it, and when you're reading, when you're watching, to know that your Shah is speaking to you right now, what he's saying to you. It is for you. Right now, there's something there for you. And as much as you take that association, you take the sohbet, is not just words, but you take the presence, you take the huzur of your sheh, and you bring the huzur, the holy presence of your sheh, wherever you go, that's a time you make very strong connection to him. It doesn't matter if your sheh is living 10,000 miles away, or he's beyond the mountain of Kaf. Because now you're not looking at the physical connection. You're looking at the spiritual connection like you've never been separated. Physically you may be separated, but spiritually you're never separated. So many, physically they're separated, spiritually completely destroyed. They don't make that connection there. They say, well, he passed, so I can do whatever I want. He passed, so I'm going to forget everything. He passed, so I'm going to go on my own way. I'm not going to go through the way that he said, continue my way. Doesn't matter that one has been with him for one year or ten years or one hundred years. Doesn't matter if you eat from the same plate or you sleep on the same bed. If you make the separation and the disconnection from your share, that is what's going to happen. But if your spirit is close to him, if you carry that spiritual connection with him, you are going to continue his work. That his presence will be very strong. You're going to say, I do this. <gasps> is Sheikh going to be happy with me or is he going to be upset? Isn't it? When he's here physically, isn't that what we are holding on tightly? Oh, is, are you sure Sheikh is not going to get upset with this? Does he, will he like this? Is he? We are constantly thinking and weighing the actions that we're doing according to his will. According to his will. Now, So now when he has passed, we must weigh our actions according to His will too. And as much as we are doing that, you're going to have connection now, that time. May Allah give us stronger connection to our share. We are weak, of course, like I said before. But we cannot take this as an excuse every time. May Allah make us stronger, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Why is it that I do not seem to love the Prophet ﷺ like some people do? They love the Sahaba, they can memorize the Prophet's history and praise him with Qasidas. However, I am not like them. Do I really have love for the Prophet ﷺ? Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, I believe that one who has a question, he's following Shaykh Fendi. Hmm? You are following Shaykh Fendi. And you are worried. You say, I love my Shaykh, I follow him. I'm listening to his sohbats. But other people, I'm looking, they're getting emotional about Prophet and it's not affecting me. And I'm getting very upset. I'm getting very worried about that. First, it's a good question because you're questioning your faith now. It's good. You're questioning your faith to see whether you're really loving the Prophet or not. Don't judge your love for the Prophet with emotion. Emotion does not equal to love. It doesn't. Especially not in our way. We don't like to show that kind of emotion so much. We like to show the work. That is going to prove whether our feeling is real or not. Anyone can stand up and recite Qasidas and Nazis. It's good. Some people, they're going to say, I, I'm stopping people from reciting Qasidas or Nats or phrasings or Salawats or Maulids. If you say that, continue to say that. You're making slander. That means you're carrying my burdens and my sins. So don't stop saying that. Say that more. It is not. I'm not saying that. I'm not trying to stop people from doing that. What I'm trying to say is, don't get stuck with that. And emotion does not equal to uh, love, the work in Islam. Uh, love is to show. 
It is how much you are sacrificing, how much you are running in the way. It is not how much you feel and how much you show that feeling without doing anything. Now that one, you're following Sheikh Effendi, correct? <coughs> you're following our way. You have more love for the Prophet than those who are not following the Sheikh or Tarikats. Because now you are following directly his inheritor. You're not just talking about the Prophet, singing about the Prophet, والسلام, reading about the Prophet. والسلام, now you are walking the way of the Prophet. And that is more important. To walk his way, to carry the faith, the way that he wants us to carry the faith in this Ahir Zaman, than to be emotional about him. If you want your heart for love to develop, a personal connection to develop with the Prophet also as well, that will come later. That will come later. Not to worry about that. That's very easy. But to connect to an inheritor of the Prophet, that is more difficult to do. Because thousands of people, millions of people, they're not making connection to an inheritor of the Prophet. But they're saying they love the Prophet. So, hold on tightly to your share. Don't worry about anything else. Later, slowly, that love with the Prophet, for the Prophet, that personal connection will uh, come to you because you are already connected to an inheritor of the Prophet. You're already connected to the one whom Prophet loves. Everyone can say that they love Prophet. We are not looking for that. We are looking if Prophet loves us. We are looking to see if Prophet has us in his heart. Everyone can say we love Shem Mawlana, but we are looking at who Shem Mawlana really puts in his heart. He is saying that we love our Sheikh and may we be in his heart inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Give. Give quickly. Okay. Say. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. What are the steps you take to empty your cup? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Good question. When you are sitting in Sohbat, listen to the Sohbat without putting any filter, without putting your own preconceived ideas, especially if it's something that you've never heard before. Or something that is opposite to what you know. Or something that is against to what you believe in. Not too many people can do this, yes. Because people come in, usually, to, they put their knowledge first. Then later they're going to challenge you. If you're still like that, you're not ready for tariqat. But if you are saying, you come and you first you say, I don't know. With that mentality, with that idea, with that belief, to say, I'm coming here <coughs> and I don't know anything. I'm here to learn. Everything that the Shah is going to speak, I will agree. I will see something in there that I must agree. I'm not going to put a, uh, uh, a wall there, to put a question there, to put um, a, s a filter there. I'm not going to use my own ideas, my own uh, preconceived notions, my own experiences there to fight with it. I'm going to be here, just neutral, 
and I'm going to let everything to come and to sink in. These are some of the steps that you can take to empty your cup. Then later, because now you're stepping on your ego, maybe the sheikh, and usually sheikhs, they will say so many things, the correct ones, the good ones, the strong ones, <coughs> that is against your ego. Of course, here when we talk about the sheikh, we're talking about our sheikh, we're talking about Sheikh Mullah, we're talking about Insan al Kamil. We're not talking about sheikhs and peers who just collect people to collect their money. We're not talking about those kind of sheikhs. And there are so many sheikhs that are like that. We're not talking about sheikhs and peers who just collect people uh, to use them. We're talking about those ones that Allah has put a description to. Follow those who ask you no fee. and Who themselves, they are on the station of safety. They are rightly guided, they are on the station of safety. Meaning they already have the Siratul Mustaqim. Those ones we are talking about. Where are those? Find them. They are easy to be found. If you are looking for Siratul Mustaqim, if you are looking for the straight path, if you are still looking for dunya, there are thousands of peers out there, they are looking for dunya too. Those who look, plus other people who look, they usually come together. And they're going to look for it together. And they're going to find it too. <laughs> but those who look for the Ahirat, they're going to pull people who are also looking for the Ahirat. Inshallah Rahman, may we find what our Shaykh has, what he has already found. It's simple. Huh? So, that time, you will empty your cup. You will listen to a sheikh and you will listen to his sohbats and it's not going to be challenging the first thing that comes to your mouth is not to question and to challenge but to let things to sit now it doesn't mean you are going to take everything blindly it's not that there are so many different steps levels that you have to take hmm? the trying to understand is different questioning with a with Arrogance, it is different. <coughs> but in these days, from 7 years old to 70 years old, that's all they do. Instead of understanding, they're questioning. The teacher at an elementary level says, this is A. The kids, they say A. This is B. The kids, this is B. And now, the sheikhs, they are doing that too. They're starting from A, B, C. But now we have people, when the share says this is A, they say, why? <laughs> why is A? Why don't you put B? Why C has to come after that? I don't like it. I don't think it's fair. I think C has to be before B. So when a person starts like that, he's putting up a wall every time he hears something that he's not emptying his cup, he's not going to get anything from it, and he's not going to give benefit to himself. So, inshallah Rahman, once you start emptying your cup, even if it is the same sohbat that you are reading over and over and over again for years, you're going to find new things in it, always. Because the words of the awliya, they are alive. Because they are fresh and alive. Their words are alive. Because the words of the Prophet is fresh and alive. And the Quran and Karim's words, they are fresh and alive. So they are all coming from the same source. Inshallah Rahman, may we always hold on tightly to our Shaykh. And to continue his work. We are not here to judge each other. We are not here to fight with each other, especially the murids. Be busy with yourself. What about you? What about me? I have to speak. You don't like it? Close your ears. You like it? Open. I have to say. Sohbet al-Shaykh Efendi. Isn't it? Who remembers that Sohbet? Who knows what I'm talking about? Say.
The question was in that song that somebody asked, how do you know if you're speaking the truth or you're breaking someone's heart? Isn't it? And Sheikh and he says, don't, first, don't interfere with each other. Then later, if you need to say something, say something nicely. But the one who has an authority, he has to speak. Even if he has to break the heart, he has to speak. That is our Sheikh. If he don't speak, if he thinks, oh, I'm not going to speak because I'm going to break that person's heart, then he's not a sheikh. Because that comes with authority, that comes with support, and you must. Prophet, like said to us, now they're making Prophet to become so weak and so mild. They want to make him to like a Jesus kind. Okay? That side of Isa, alayhi salam. But Isa, alayhi salam, also say openly in the Bible, don't think. <coughs> I'm coming for what? Mercy? I'm coming with a sword. He's saying. Until every law is fulfilled, don't think that I'm coming for that. I'm coming to fulfill every law, and if you don't, I have my sword. I have the authority, meaning. Prophet said to Islam, yes, of course. He was mild and with certain matters, he was very merciful. Of course he was. But they're concentrating on that. Now, only. But Prophet said to us, he is also giving warning. He was also being very tough. And he was also putting people in their right place, disciplining them when it is necessary. So those ones that we are following, our sheikhs, when it's necessary, yes, they're going to break hearts. Because your heart that time it's filled with the ego. It's filled with the idols. You have to break that. May Allah forgive me and bless all of you, inshallah. May Allah raise the station of our Sultan and our uh, Sahib al Saif higher and higher. May they send support to us. May they protect our Jama'at. May they protect the whole Ummah and open our way to Haq. Wa min Allahu tawfiq al Fatiha. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته